by the huge who owns ships, the ports, trains, controls trucks, the world. And most of all, Economy, by the containers politics, stacked like building and blocks. Military positions but what are, are the crucial. processes of container this ports is all like this? Over the world happening. How are containers unloaded? Where do they go? And what happens Can again, next? Control of multiple We're going to find out if containerization is as nations. orderly as it seems. So or if there is some chaos in these neatly stacked of global trade, and what controlling these assets, automation put China in the sovereignty the world. and economy now the sorting of so cargo many countries into containers is done in danger the of the so-called this allows ships and to have greater efficiency when loading and unloading cargo, the original but it has also brought new challenges when promising countries to develop them to center of the need to unload Asia, hundreds of Africa, thousands of and containers you. at a time. What's ahead? China gained momentum container control of multiple ports this is not across the, focus the world, of container ports turning it to events that didn't happen overnight. Cranes that China has been working for that for several years. Cargo. Cranes can be hinged, forming a part of global domination of supply chains, which, like and most when you other it, parts of a container, nothing are standardized stop throughout but the world. You. By the another international the world, standard is the unique identification helps to As keep of track of each container. China the containers in more are typically than loaded onto terminal the world. tractors. And let These me funny-looking trucks are meant for short-distance haulage from in China. order to get the container it's from the side of the ship into the storage not yard only for where the containers the wait to be within up Chinese by a truck or a train. Ports. But in order to move containers itself. around a storage yard and, and these, onto trucks in the name of there are several options for machinery. China has Two of the most interesting are reach stackers, naval bases, rubber tire gantries. For rubber every tire nation in the region, but cranes that are some countries to here started realizing larger versions and many run on tracks here have even back off from China projects. Multiple roads it, initially, of China had 101 reach overseas port have a long arm projects, that can easily be but in year 2023, this dropped to only 92 to negotiate them ports projects. The nine less ports had one step of the process to be out, so far, and each of them had its own resource semi to cancel it and in fact, or suspend it. Some of the crane in this by the huge ships, you see cranes, trucks, control most of all, some by the, the containers stacked like building blocks. And Chinese but what are the processes of container ports like this? But if we Our containers again, unloaded, this video, where do they go, the and what happens below. next? Because any We're going to find out if containerization is as orderly as it seems, to be or if there is some chaos bots, in these neatly so stacked rows, and Thank what you. opportunity it helps so to keep track of each container. Global trade the containers are typically loaded onto terminal tractors. Surprisingly, these more than 80% of its global trade translates to a 25 point side the ship trillion in dollars the storage of goods where the containers wait to be picked up this percentage is even higher for many in developing order to nations move containers around and the storage these goods yard needs and onto trucks and trains there are this several is the reason why ports form an two of the most interesting part of global supply chain in rubber tire gantries ports even act rubber as tire gantries for many countries helps to keep example again here 92 port projects total port projects outside China with Chinese investments. 13 port projects with majority Chinese ownership. 10 port projects with majority Chinese ownership where there is physical potential for naval use. Let's break it down here. Labels that according to Chinese ownership. 0 to 12.5% or 12.5 to 25%, 25 to 37.5%. Then 37.5% to 50% or over 50%. The share of the port projects that is owned by Chinese government or Chinese companies, will it be 50% owned by CCP or 375 owned or 25 to 37.5% per se owned by CCP? Lastly, 0 to 12.5% owned by again by CCP. Then it has also physical potential for naval base use whether the port is located at a part that includes with enough depths for naval vessels, we can distinguish it by yes or no. Here its data reported as of September 2023, firstly in Europe, in Riga port coat terminal project in Latvia, yes for naval use, and shared ownership is 0%, investment of $110 million. In Savorbino, 
Airport Development Project, Russia. Naval use, it's unclear. Shared ownership is 0%. Investment of $1 billion. Germany, Hamburg Port Container Tolerot Acquisition. Yes for naval use. Ownership shared of 24.99%. Investment of $76 million. In Rotterdam, Euromax Container Terminal Acquisition in Netherlands. Yes for naval use. 35% shared ownership. $140 million in investment. Zeebrugge Container Terminal Acquisition in Belgium can be used for naval. 100% shared ownership in $39 million in investment. In France, Marseille Port of FOS Eurofos Terminal Link Acquisition can be used for Navy. 49% shared ownership an investment of $450 million. Nuatum Container Terminal Bilbao SL Acquisition in Spain and clear use for Navy. 51% shared ownership of investment of $230 million. Another Spain Nuatum Container Terminal in Valencia SAU Acquisition and clear for naval use. Shared ownership of 51%, investment of $230 million, same as Bilbao Port. Vado Refair, Terminal via Vado Holdings, VV Acquisition in Italy, yes for naval use. Shared ownership of 40%, with investment of $59 million. Perius Port Acquisition in Greece. Naval use can be of 67 shared ownership investment of $410 million. Turkey Comport Warp Acquisition. Naval use, yes, of 65% shared ownership and investment of $940 million. In Ukraine, in Termomos Port Inlet Channel Dredging Project, Black Sea Port is unclear for naval use. Shared ownership of zero person, investment of $15 million. Nikolaev Mikolaev Port Warp Project, still in Ukraine, potential use for Navy, unclear and 100% shared ownership to investment of $75 million. Lastly, Israel. In Asdod South Port Construction Project, it can be used for Navy and 0% shared ownership of $1 billion investment. Here in African nation, like Djibouti Port Acquisition, naval use can be done with 23.5% shared ownership of investment of $190 million. Here in Madagascar, the Malabi Deep Water Port Project, formerly Tuwamasna, naval use can be done, an investment of $1 billion with shared ownership of 0%. Kenya Lamu Port Construction Birds, 1 to 3 project, naval use can be 0% shared ownership with $480 million in an investment. Another Kenya project in Mombasa. Port Bird 19 project of 0% shared ownership and $67 million investment. Tanzania Bagamoyo Port Project unclear for naval use, 0% shared ownership and investment of $10 billion. Mozambique Beira Fishing Port Dock 1 Reconstruction Project, naval use, yes, shared ownership of 0% and $120 million in investment. Namibia Walvis Bay Container Terminal Expansion Project, yes for naval use, shared ownership of 0%, investment of $390 million. Angola, Lobito Port Expansion Project, shared ownership, 0%, 
naval use, yes, and $1.2 billion in investment. Democratic Republic of Congo, Matadi Impengo International Port Pace Project, not for naval use, 0% shared ownership of $57 million in investment. Another Angola project is in Cabinda Cayu Port Project, non-naval use, 0% shared ownership of $830 million investment. Equatorial Guinea, another African nation, Bata Port Reconstruction and Expansion Project, yes for naval use, shared ownership, 0%, Investment in $350 million. Cameroon Creepy Deep Water Port Base Project, yes per naval use, 66.7% shared ownership, an investment of $570 million. Nigeria Leaky Deep Water Port Base 1 Project, naval use can be of 52.50% shared ownership of investment $1.5 billion. Lagustin Canport Container Terminal TICT acquisition still in Nigeria, non-naval use of 28.5 shared ownership and $150 million investment. Togo Lumi Port Container Terminal Project Yes, per naval use, 50% shared ownership of investment of $210 million. Ghana Tema Port New Container Terminal Project, shared ownership of 0% with $480 million investment can be naval use. Ivory Coast Abidjan Port Second Container Terminal Project, yes, per naval use with 0% shared ownership and $810 million investment. Mauritania, Norachut Port Berth 1 to 3 expansion project, yes for naval use, 0% shared ownership and $46 million in investment. Sudan New Livestock Terminal Base project, yes for naval use, 0% shared ownership and $37 million in investment. In Saudi Arabia, Asia, Saudi, Middle East, Jizan Economic Arabian City Dredging like Project, it's unclear Aden for Bay naval use and Mocha container. 0% shared expansion in ownership project, yes, for with naval use. $390 million shared investment ownership with in Saudi Arabia, Saudi, Jizan Economics. In Saudi Arabia, Saudi. Jizan Economic City Dredging Project, it's unclear for naval use, 0% shared in ownership with $390 million investment. Another Saudi Arabian project, the MAM Port Second Container Terminal Project, yes for naval use, 0% shared ownership of $18 million in investment. Qatar Hamad Port Pace Terminal Project, not for naval use, shared ownership of 0% with $880 million in investment. United Arab Emirates phase of the Khalifa Port Station Project, yes for naval use, 0% shared ownership with $57 million investment. In Egypt, the Mieta International Container Terminal Project, yes for naval use can be an investment of $200 million with shared ownership of 0%. Another Egypt project, Sokna New Container Terminal Acquisition for naval use unclear with 25% shared ownership and $380 million investment. Here is the Asian ports of China. Firstly, Pakistan. Water Port Free Zone and Export Processing Zone Phase 1 Project, yes for naval use, 0% shared ownership 
with $32 million in investment. Another Pakistan project is the Qasim Port QICT number no. 2 container terminal construction project and clear for naval use with 0% shared ownership of $160 million investment. Inja Visinjam Port Automation Terminal General Contracting Project or the Chinese Port Cranes. It's unclear for naval use with shared ownership of 0% of investment undisclosed. Sri Lanka Colombo Port South Container Terminal Project. Yes, for naval use with 0% shared ownership and $500 million in investment. Another Sri Lankan port project, the Hambantuta Port Project. Yes, for naval use with 70% shared ownership and $1.3 billion in investment. The Myanmar Kia Yuk Pyu Port Project, yes for naval use, 70% shared ownership with $1.3 billion in investments. Cambodia Phnom Penh, new container terminal project, NEF for naval use, 0% shared ownership with $28 million investment. Vietnam Saigon International Terminal Project, unclear for naval use with 47.3% shared ownership and $160 million investment. Malaysia Quantum Deep Water Port Terminal Project, yes for naval use, with 40% shared ownership, $370 million investments. Malaysia Malacca Kuala Lingji International Port Project, yes for naval use, 0% shared ownership, $170 million investment. Singapore Pasir Panjang New Bird Project, naval use can be done with 49% shared ownership, investment of $2.6 billion. Philippines Manila Port Container Number no. 7 Bird Yard South Expansion Project can be used for Navy and 0% shared ownership. $10 million in investment. The more Leste Tibar Pay Port Project naval use can be done with 0% shared ownership. $940 million investment. South Korea Express Busan Container Terminal KBCT Terminal Acquisition naval use unclear with 20% shared ownership an investment of $1.2 billion. Australia Darwin Port, 99 year lease. Naval use can be done, 0% shared ownership with $360 million investment. Australia Newcastle Port acquisition. Naval use can be done with 50% shared ownership, $420 million investment. Lastly, in another Australian project, Melbourne Port, 50-year lease. Yes, for naval use, 0% shared ownership, $7.3 billion in investment. Papua New Guinea, Lay Port, Developmental Tidal Basin Phase 1 project, unclear for naval use, 0% shared ownership, $290 million investment and they're here in the americas united states of america in seattle container terminals number 25 28 30 rental naval use unclear with 56 million dollars in investment with zero percent shared ownership the port of los angeles peer rental number 100 to 102 Yes, for naval use, with $110 million investment, with 0% shared ownership. Bahamas North Ibeco Island Port Project, it's on concession loan, 0% shared ownership, $39 million investment, can't be done for Navy use. Mexico Taxpan Port Container Terminal Project, yes, can be 
for naval use, zero percent shared ownership, forty-five million dollars investment. Mexico port of Veracruz project, two hundred thirty million dollars investment, zero percent shared ownership. Naval use can be done. Panama port of Balboa container phase three terminal panel and dredging project, zero percent shared ownership. Investment of $30 million, yes, for naval use. Ecuador Posurha Deep Water Port Project, $110 million in investment of 0% shared ownership. Naval use, yes, it can be. Peru Chancay Terminal Acquisition, 60% shared ownership. Naval use, yes, can be. $230 million in investment. Chile San Antonio Pier Expansion Project, 0% shared ownership, yes for naval use, $44 million investment. Brazil Paranagua Port Terminal TCP Acquisition, $920 million in investments, 90% shared ownership, naval use can be done. China has become the world's largest trading country and the second largest economy in the world and conducts about 95% of its international trade through sea lanes. Chinese President Xi Jinping's launch of the Belt and Road Initiative in 2013 and the introduction of 21st century maritime Silk Road, which connects China to Europe and the Arctic Ocean via the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean. Hub supercharged China overseas port investments and construction activities. President Xi has personally emphasized the importance of ports for economic development when visiting Taishan port in Guangxi province in April 2017. Xi highlighted the importance of ports in economic development. We often say that to get rich, we must first build roads but in coastal areas. To get to it, we must also first build ports. In which countries is China investing? As of September 2023, China has signed 70 bilateral and regional shipping agreements with 66 countries and regions. Today, China's shipping routes and service networks cover major countries and regions worldwide. Although China is not yet a global naval power and currently has limited overseas naval bases, it has become a leading commercial power that wields significant geoeconomic influence over international sea lanes and commercial ports, underpinning the global flow of goods. To furthermore explain it, like in Yemen, which is facing one of the largest humanitarian crises, imports 90% of its food to its ports. In fact, 90% of its entire African continent's imports exports are carried through by sea. And none limited to the African continent, Ukraine, one of the largest exporters of wheat in the world, in just eight months' time before the war versus Russia, it shipped around 50 million tons of grains through its ports in the Black Sea, a quantity enough could feed around 400 million people. And these are just a few examples how important ports are for nations and global trading. Now imagine letting go of the control of the most critical ports. Chinese companies seem scary now, right? This is why China has done and continues to do with many countries as of 2023. These are 92 ports with Chinese ownership. 13 of them majority owned by China, and 10 of these projects even have potential for naval military use, which means China is planning to dock its naval ships in these ports that China gains control of the ports as supported with various methods and the most popular which you may guess to the words of John Adams, American statesman, he states, there are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by the sword and others by death, meaning 
China is precisely done the inevitable consequences for those nations. For the Belt and Road Initiative, and is famously known for lending heavily to countries, especially the developing and underdeveloped ones, for infrastructure projects, with certain nation fails to pay the loans, the Chinese companies will take over and control strategic assets in that nation. And one of the notorious cases is what China has been doing in Sri Lanka. For China literally forces Sri Lanka to surrender a strategically located 4,000 acres of port in the Indian Ocean region, along with 15,000 acres of surrounding land. China dream of claiming such critical spot in the Indian Ocean. It would have been a dream without the Sri Lankan president and other few politicians. This is a story of greed, power, and dominance. It's the story of Hanbat Tuta, port of Hanta port, located in the most strategic location in the world that sits on the key shipping route between the Malacca Strait and the Swiss Canal, which is the shortest and the most critical trade route linking Asia, Europe, back around 36,000 ships, including 4,500 oil tankers, use this route every year. With Colombo Port, Sri Lanka's largest port, located 200 kilometers from Hambantota Port, it caters mainly to container ships. The Sri Lankan government saw a big opportunity here, decided to build Hambantota Port to provide other services to international shipping, including refueling, repair works, and facilities for changing crews. But Sri Lanka didn't have enough funds to completely fund the project on its own, so it asked for help, but most of the countries rejected lending to Sri Lanka. Since the country's economy was already in turmoil, most countries saw Hambantota port is unviable there is where everyone's beloved dear friend came to help. You guess it right. China has generous state of investments in long-term projects, gives $1.3 billion in loan for this project. And as usual, this port witnessed the same pattern every BRI project. The company got a contract was a Chinese company inducted mostly workers were also Chinese. And these same workers were also paid from same money China had lent. So technically, it only flows back to China. It would, if we talk about 80% of funds, around $1.3 billion required for this project, were lent by China, and the remaining 15% given to SLPA, or the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, making the project an overall $1.5 billion. The construction was carried out by China Harbor Engineering Company and the Sino Hydro Corporation, both which are Chinese companies. The construction of the port began in 2008, and it's phase one for which China generously charges an whopping interest rate of 6.3%, as compared to 1.2% rated by the IMF around the World Bank. Why is Sri Lanka still accepted the loans? something to discuss in the later videos but for now let's go back to the sri lanka story so phase one of the project was completed in 2010 started in 2008 with operations beginning in 2011 phase two began project in 2012 and was completed in 2015 the port was fully pledged ready to tap huge opportunity it had but things did not really go as planned. The Hambantota port was failing and has failed to generate sufficient revenues to inadequate governance, lack of commercial and industrial activities, inability to attract passing vessels to dock at this port. This was mostly because the ships chose the most advanced Colombo port instead of the Hambantota port just 200 kilometers away from it. When the first phase of the port became operational, it only attracted 
34 ships in 2012 as compared to 3,667 ships at Colombo port. After the construction of the second phase, the situation did not really improve on average. The port witnessed the visits by only about 400 vessels annually as compared to 4,000 average vessels annually in Colombo port. The port started suffering losses by end of 2016. Total losses mounted to $34 million while debt was ballooning. Sri Lanka had to pay nearly $1.7 billion to China as principal interest from the loan. The debt repayment for this loan around 2015 was close to $100 million annually. Once using pretext of recalling recurring losses beside a public partnership scheme, to manage and operate the port of Sri Lanka had no option but to face the most difficult decisions ever in December of 2016. The Sri Lanka government decided to restructure the port in collaboration with China Merchants Port Holdings Company or CM Port to make it commercially viable. Two new entities were created, the Hambantuta International Port Group or HIPG and the Hambantuta International Port Services Limited, or HIPS now, its IPG will develop and manage the port along with the adjoining land. While HIPS operates the port services, China's entity, CM Port, invested $1.2 billion for acquisition of an 85% stake in its IPG and 52% stake in HIPS while the remaining stakes given to the Sri Lankan Port Authority. This brought the total Chinese ownership of in the Hanban Toto Port to about 70%, so now China had majority ownership of this project, and it also has the authority to operate the port. But how many years is it? 10, 20, or 30 years? Well, none of these China lease the port for 99 years. Yeah, you heard it, 99 years. But the twist don't end there, interestingly. There was no change in Sri Lanka's debt obligations for this project even after Chinese acquisition. This is because China don't wave off the loan in exchange for the port. Instead of the $1.2 billion dollars, for the acquisition with these funds sent to Sri Lankan Treasury, which is may used for other purposes, will taking over the port both HIPG and HIPS entities with majority Chinese stake did not inherit any liability. And so the government of Sri Lanka is liable to the debt and still continues to repay the debt despite handing over the port to China. And this is how China gained control over strategic port for not only 10, 20, but 99 years. By that one, one wonder, during all the chaos wasn't the Sri Lankan president or leadership aware of this Chinese tactics. And there was none, one other person responsible for all of this. In his, under his lead from 2005 to 2015, the country's debt increased threefold from $15 billion to $44.8 billion. This is where one of China's scheme strategies come into play. That is to bribe the decision makers and make sure they stay in power as long as possible. In the case of Sri Lankan, China briefed the leadership to such an extent, the president of Sri Lanka was literally called a puppet of China. Every major decision he took was heavily influenced by China. This man had stayed in power 10 years, destroyed Sri Lanka's economy, was none other than Mahindra Rajapaksa. Look invisible in his grip on power was absolute. He controlled the parliament. His family controlled 75% of nation's budget during Rajapaksa's regime. 
he and his three brothers controlled many government ministries and around 80% of total government spending, so it became easy for China to bribe them and get things done in favor of Chinese interests. China influence grew so that entities from China got the work done without any hassle and at exorbitant prices because during the construction of Hanban Toto Port, there was a large boulder partially blocked the entrance and prevented large ships like oil tankers from entering the port. But during construction, there was not any taken into consideration. The port was built in 2010 on Rogos birthday the port was open for ships despite nothing done on the boulder. Only a year later China Harbor blasted the boulder but it was fishy and the cause of blasting this boulder China Harbor charged astonishingly 40 million dollars to do this job. In fact give rise to speculations whether the company was over charging or this price tag included kickbacks to Raja Paksa. In another case, Raja approved an international airport named Matala Raja Paksa International Airport, which financed by China Exim Bank. This project bound to fail because just $6,000 was spent on airport's feasibility study, but more than $80,000 just spent on lavish ceremony including dancers, singers to prematurely Hamba Toto Port on Raja Paksa's birthday. This shows his dedication to China, and well, China didn't stop here. It also influenced the elections according to investigation during 2015 in Sri Lankan election. Large payments from Chinese port construction fund flowed directly to campaign aids and ads and activities for Rajapaksa's party. Around $7.6 million were transferred from China Harbor's account to affiliate Raja's campaign. As we saw, China Harbor is the same company that built Hamban Toto Port. In fact, in just 10 days before the elections, around $3.7 million was distributed in checks and for use for promotional activities in distributing gifts to people funding popular figures who will support the Rajapaksa's party. And guess what most of the payments were made from a sub-account control by none other than China Harbor. Well, Sri Lanka is not the only nation has been doing this. This is many nations some attempts but failed miserably. Because China was caught for offering bribes and one of them is actually hilarious. In Bangladesh, China Harbor was accused of bringing or bribing an official at the Ministry of Roads. They did this by stuffing a hundred thousands of dollars into a tea box. And while it sounds funny, it's only a China thing. In the end, China Harbor was banned from securing any future contracts in Bangladesh. The second incident took place in 2009 in my native country, the Philippines, where China Harbor's parent company, China Communications Construction Company, was banned for eight years for, from bidding on World Bank projects because of corrupt practices. Coming back to Sri Lanka's story, Mahindra Rajapaksa put Sri Lanka's economy in a fragile situation with anti-Chinese anti-Rajapaksa sentiments extremely high. The opposition leader Mar Maitripala Sersena won the election because he promised to kick China out of the country and cancel many Chinese projects. As he promised, he canceled many Chinese projects and tried to bring Sri Lanka on a track. But the damage was already too high when it not only became concerned for China's biggest rival in the region, India. On the 16th of August 2022, a Chinese ship, Yuan Wang 5, entered the Hamiltoto port. Sri Lanka and China referred to this ship as a scientific research ship. 
Then will the USA and India became extremely cautious after this move. This ship was operated by PLA Strategic Support Force and used it for military purposes, despite being registered as Marine Scientific Research Vessel. Later, it turned out to be a truck satellites and missiles ship with a range of 750 kilometers, which means it had the ability to track activities in the multiple angel states in the south. Later, other Chinese ships and submarines were also welcomed by Sri Lanka in Hambantota port. So China has gained two crucial advantages to this port. One, it has gotten access to one of the most critical ports in the Indian Ocean region, very near to the most critical trade route, the route of the Swiss Canal and the Malacca Strait. This is because 80% of China's entire oil supply are roughly 90% overall Chinese trade passes through Malacca Strait which China always fears that India might block the Malacca Strait choke point in case of a conflict. If it, this happens, you can just imagine the situation in China. This is the reason China has taken a lot of steps to safeguard its oil supplies. One of which is the Hanban Tauta port. Number two, this port become a key port of China's strings of pearl strategy a network of ports and military infrastructure. China is building to encircle its biggest rival in the Indian Ocean region, India. Hambantota port is one of the closest points being located just a few hundred kilometers from India. Though times are changing with USA and China taking multiple steps to beating China in the Indian Ocean region. See here, just take a look how China used the debt trap strategy for another country, not far from Sri Lanka, where they repeated the same thing. The nation was on the verge of bankruptcy. No one was ready to fund big amounts of their infrastructure projects, so China lent them a huge amount of money. As usual, they failed to repay, repay and had no choice but to hand over their assets to China, including a strategically located port 40 years. Imagine 40 years this country, not other than Pakistan. Since gaining independence, Pakistan has been extremely unstable politically sometimes. The head of state is an elected leader, sometimes it's a military general who snatched from power with a military coup. This instability became a major reason why no companies are willing to invest significantly in Pakistan. In this power struggle, Pakistani's economy went down for a loss. It faced bankruptcy several times and so it approached the IMF for bailout packages, but for not for not for two but twelve times to no avail, rejected. To it receive funds they were meant for Pakistan's survival, not to spend on expensive infrastructure projects. Pakistan was not able to spend on its military infrastructure development. Then China was paying attention, and they saw a huge opportunity in Sri Lanka, the troubled nation, in 2015. It came with a massive regional connectivity project called CPEEC or China Pakistani Economic Corridor, which is part of China's BRI or the Belt and Road Initiative. Initially, CPEC had projects worth $46 billion, but as of 2017, has increased to $62 billion. Imagine that. With these numbers still expected to increase, these numbers look really good on paper, but as you know, the contracting companies were Chinese again. Their workers were Chinese, and once again, most of the money went to back to China. In 2002, China Harbor Construction Company built Phase 1 on the Gwadar port at a cost of 
$248 million, completing it in 2006. The estimated cost of the second phase was $840 million, with most of the funding coming from China. This is a narrative thinking. A Chinese company took the port on lease right. Actually, no, in fact, you'd be surprised to know that in 2007, Pakistan granted the management of this port to PSA or Port of Singapore Authority for a period of 40 years. Not just according to the agreement, the PSA also agreed to invest $550 million during the next five years for the port development. The Gwadar Port Authority was all set to receive 9% from cargo operations, marine services, and 15% from Gwadar Free Zone business. Even many import duties and taxes was waived off, so it was a win-win situation for everyone. The Chinese influence was countered. Pakistan's got funds for to develop a port and also a business alongside. But in 2013, Pakistan made such decision that sent shockwaves across almost every nation. And again, in 2013, the management of Gwadar Port was handed over to a Chinese company called China Overseas Ports Holdings Company for 43 years, according to the Jupil political experts. Pakistan took this move to balance influence in the country and to seek Beijing's more active support because there were tensions between U.S. and Pakistan over the American policies in Af Afghanistan. And two years later, the Gwadar port became part of the CPEC or CEPEC under which China planned to extend the port's capacity and infrastructure connecting the port China proposed expanding the current capacity of the port, which could currently handle ships weighing up to 20,000 tons to accommodate vessels weighing up to 70,000 tons, including a floating liquefied natural gas terminal with a capacity of 500 million cubic feet of gas per day, a desalination plant, and a 2,902-acre economic zone, in total $1.62 billion was projected to be spent on this new infrastructure. Here then, China too always take away more of the income benefits, according to the agreement, Chinese port operator CO. PHC or the China Overseas Ports Holdings Company will get a 91% share of the revenue from the operations of the port terminals and another percent of the revenue generated by the free zone. Though the port is expected to handle 1 million tons of cargo, cargos annually and generate lots of business, Pakistan would hardly be, receive any benefits out of it. This port is also a savior for China since it safeguards China's energy needs. You might think as well it has two major reasons. One, the main reason is again the Malacca Strait choke point. With this port, China can skip the choke point to a large extent and directly transport crude oil and other energy resources from Pakistan to Gwadar port to Kasgar province in China via roadways number two reason. This port is located just 600 kilometers from the Strait of Hormuz and if you haven't heard about it, it's the same choke point to which 20% of the world's crude oil and liquid pipe fuels pass. So having a military setup in Gwadar port, access to deterrence against two rivals of China, the major one of which is India. Even this port acts as a pearl in China's string of pearl strategies. These are the major reasons why this port is so critical for China. In fact, it is so concerned about 
in that in 2017 it gifted two Chinese ships to Pakistan Navy to safeguard the Gwadar port and adjoining trade routes. Later two more ships were also provided to the Pakistani government. Similarly, China has gone head on with the US in the South China Sea. Some of the ports can play a crucial role in favor of China. Could be the new castle port in Melbourne port and Darwin port in Australia ports and in the Philippines but significantly the Philippines new president President Bongbo Marcos Jr has been leaning now towards to America. It changed over time with those Edgar sites are torn for China. Then Timor-Leste, the second port in Vietnam and its ports in Malaysia, Singapore and South Korea. In fact, the most concerning case of all is this is in 2015, the, Austral the Australia's Darwin port was given on a 99-year lease to a Chinese company Landbridge Group. Later, America showed concerns regarding this move, so Australia reviewed this project and decided to cancel it. This lease, unfortunately, this the level of influence as China has used of these ports can be detrimental not just only to the United States but to these countries too. For instance, we witnessed the recent incident of Chinese fighter jets encircling a Philippine aircraft during, during a joint patrol with Australia. China regularly keeps bullying smaller countries in some way and are coming back to the other ports on the Asian continent along with all these ports. China has either has stakes or handles ports operations in 10 more countries that include Papua New Guinea, North Korea, Russia, Bangladesh, Myanmar, the UAE, Qatar and Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Israel and Turkey, with these Chinese investments ranging anywhere between $30 million to more than a billion dollars. Similarly, in the case of African continent, China has investments in not one, not ten, but over 24 ports across more than 10 countries. The most concerning aspect of these ports is that some of them are very close to and located to the world's most crucial choke points, the Strait of Hormuz and, and the Bab al-Mandab Strait. As you know, 30 to 35 percent of the world's crude oil passes through this choke point, so China clearly is a threat to the world. And you may ask if China has is such a huge threat to the sovereignty of its borrowers, if China has and still relentlessly distributing loans to debt trap countries with so many infamous cases of debt trap out there. Why are countries still keep on borrowing from China? In fact, many countries have ditched the IMF and the World Bank and borrowed from Chinese banks. And well, you will be surprised to know that the interest rates of the World Bank and IMF are around 1 to 2 percent with a maturity period of around 25 to 30 years. China on the other hand offers interest rates up to 4 to 6 percent and maturity period of 15 to 20 years. According to a report, China has lent around 1.4 trillion dollars between 2000 and 2021 to more than 165 countries especially low middle income countries. China is so cunning that they initially land for infrastructure projects and when the borrower of the said countries struggle to repay these loans and need emergency rescue loans, guess who offer these loans to lend? So ironically, 
China has first offered huge infrastructure loans to poor countries and came again with a rescue loan just because they were struggling to repay them. These rescue loans increased to be to have 58% of China's lending to low and middle income countries in 2021 compared to 5% in 2013. Now, three major reasons why so many countries prefer borrowing from China. Here are the major reasons. Number one, the first, IMF and World Bank does not provide huge loans to countries with weak economic conditions, especially for expensive infrastructure projects. In fact, the IMF discourages poor countries from taking large commercial loans, but in the case of China, it was offering huge ticket size loans to clearly so many countries would choose China. The second reason is the neoliberal and stringent conditionality of IMF. So if a nation asks for loans in IMF, the nation has to agree to multiple IMF conditions, includes open markets, scrapping government subsidies, the regulating key sectors, privatization, and debt management. Also, the IMF will ask low-income nations to seek debt relief before they talk on, they took on new loans. And then, nations must abide by a debt limit framework to benefit from debt relief. It's a headache for these poor countries. But then again, China has nothing to do with where the country's economy is going and what it would it do and should not do with their economy. And so again, this low income countries chose Chinese lenders. The third reason why they want China loans because it offers so-called mixed funding model option. In this model, China lends huge amounts to low income countries for infrastructure and for reimbursement can be guaranteed by lucrative commercial projects like oil mines or revenues from exports. The infrastructure is then didn't develop as long as the commercial project remains profitable. So basically, instead of paying back with regular money, these countries promise share some of the money they make from projects like selling oil and minerals or profit from other ventures. Experts call this model the resource back lending model. This model is being used in poor countries that are rich in natural resources and I said before, in my native country, the Philippines, that's why they really want to pursue the West Philippine Sea because it has rich of natural oil and gas. It's more expensive oil to sell. Back to this model of China. It's first applied by a mixed fudging model. In a war-torn African nation called Angola, during 2004 to 2010, Angola received around $10 billion from China Exim Bank with its oil as its collateral. Later, China replicated this model in various countries like Democratic Republic of Congo in 2007, where loans backed by mineral exports continued to finance infrastructure projects in the DRC. New Guinea in 2017, the two entered into a backseat back financing agreement with Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, Exim, China Exim Bank, for $587 million for its two ROD projects. In fact, projects up to $30 billion had been signed in several African countries under this model. Along with this, China is always willing to accept a repayment in alternative forms like geopolitical favors or acquiring strategic assets of that nation. For example, China converted a $230 million loan into grants from, for the construction of Gwadar International Airport, which provided China the sole right to construct the airport instead of relying on competitive bidding processes. Compare that to IMF and other financial institutions who stay out of these shady agreements and prefer to receive payments only in cash. These are the major reasons why 
borrowing from China looks like the win-win situation at a first glance. And if you're thinking at a only Asian and African nations get attracted to it, these loans, then look at this map. If you notice, it includes 12 port projects on the European continent, including two ports in Spain, three in Ukraine, and one in Germany, Latvia, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Italy, and Greece. All these ports handle about 10% of Europe's shipping container capacity. Here, the Chinese stakes in this so-called Zeus port in Belgium and the ports in Mykolaiv or formerly Nikolaiv in Ukraine have even reached 100%. Surprisingly, three of these nations, namely Ukraine, Latvia, and Greece, are even BRI signatories. In fact, Chinese loans to European countries almost quadrupled to 20% from 2018 to 2021. And it's not just the Chinese loans have reached the South and North American continents, as well with investments in 10 port projects in countries like Chile, Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, Panama, the Bahamas, Mexico, and two port terminals here in the U.S. In fact, some of these ports handled some of the highest traffic volumes for those countries. For example, in Brazil, port of Paranagua receives the third highest amount of traffic, and shockingly, China has a 90% stake in this port. Similarly, 60% of the Chennai port in Peru is owned by China, which is clearly dangerous for these countries. Among all the ports mentioned, one of the most infamous cases apart from the Hambantota port that not only made headlines worldwide a few years ago, but also demonstrates the influence China has on a continent. It is located in Europe. This port is one of the critical ports in Europe, and the world was shocked when China controlling a stake in the largest port of Greece, seventh largest port in Europe, the Piraeus port. The story begins in 2015 when Greece was grappling with massive debt crisis. It also missed 11.6 billion euro payment to the IMF, making it the first developed nation to have missed such a payment. This was a time when no one was interested in investing in Greece, and this when China saw an opportunity. A Chinese company named Costco or China Ocean Shipping Company came in and acquired a controlling state in the Perios port, well, this is not the first time Costco was operating the Greek port. Costco secured the right to operate the parts of Perios in 2008. Later, during Greece's economic crisis, it acquired 51% of the port in 2016 and increased to 67% in 2021 of October. So as of now, Costco has the majority stake, which means the Chinese shipping company can decide the future of port because of the location this port serves. China has, has the gateway in Europe and the Middle East. Surprisingly, after Costco started handling the port in 2008, the container volume rose by almost seven times in the next 10 years to 5.65 million TEU or 20 foot equivalent per unit, which basically a standard unit measure of 20 feet by 20 feet by 20 feet, often measured in mar mar marine cargo transport. In fact, this port became one of the fastest growing ports in the world. Additionally, Costco claims that this port provided direct and indirect employment to over 1,000 people. So everything seems fine, right? Thousands of people are getting employed and the port is doing very well. And that too with Chinese investment actively, we only saw one side of the story. According to Gogo's leader of the workers' union, Aperius, the working conditions have worsened after China's entry into Aperius. According to also to Gogo's, the workers at Aperius received no safety training resulting in multiple accidents happening at the port. 
in October of 2021, Ports Union called a 24-hour 20 hour strike after one worker died when he was struck by a container crane. On top of that, most of the workers were hired on contract basis, them, leaving them with no job security. In addition to all of this, even employees at senior positions were replaced by Chinese employees. According to Marcos, a worker at the port, whenever the workforce tried to raise a voice against all these practices, they were fired by Costco, so the workers were too scared to speak up. Sometimes even these workers even worked the whole ship without taking any breaks. He also mentioned at the time his co-workers had to urinate in plastic bottles, such as was the pathetic conditions of the workers at the previous port. Most of the equipment and materials used in Costco lead construction were imported from China. So again, most of the funds just went back to China. From a geopolitical angle, the Chinese presence is a huge threat to the region, bordering the Mediterranean Sea on the south and the Balkans Peninsula on the north. Perius port is one of the closest Mediterranean ports on the European continent. To the Swiss Canal main shipping routes, it also has railway connection to the hinterland of Central and Eastern Europe. As you know, Swiss Canal same passageway through 12% of goods and more, more than $1 trillion pass through this route. And it's not only about trade, about 20 million passengers go through Perius port every year. Its strategic location makes it an important port in the Mediterranean, so China has an excellent opportunity to get a foothold in Europe. To this port, considering China's stake, China can use the port as a deterrent pretty much any time, although the chances, chances seem very low because of global pressure, but still has the chances it can be ignored. And I'm not just guessing it out of the out of thin air. Here, the Chinese Navy has played this card before in July 2017. The Chinese naval fleet, including the missile destroyer and missile frigate and the supply vessel, paid a visit to Perius port. But hold on, on this, there were incidents in the past. It's 2024 now, and things have changed. And just changing drastically, the, chi the countries that were once trapped in China's debt have shown massive resistance to China. C countries opting out of the BRI, and many of them have banned Chinese companies. They are showing strong resistance to Chinese bullying, seems the world has learned to contain a dragon again. It's not just big countries. Even the smaller countries are standing firmly against the dragon's might. The same Greece, which was once sold a controlling stake to China out of a compulsion. Later, block a Chinese company named China State Grid from bidding on power distribution projects. Now, this happened in January of 2021, when Greece allowed companies to bid for a 49% stake in the con country's mid to low voltage distribution network operator. The Chinese company China State Grid already held a 24% in Greece high voltage independent power transmission operator, but it wanted more. But Greece didn't want the Chinese ownership to reach dangerous levels, so it straight away blocked the Chinese entity. Greece didn't stop here. It also disqualified another Chinese state-owned enterprise, South Power Grid, from participating in the bid. The case of the port to the decision to sell the stake to a Chinese firm has been backfiring. It has been facing a lot of opposition from the locals in the region, with major reasons being poor work conditions and involvement of a foreign company. Costco's plans to build a new hotel, mall, and other facilities in the port are already have been delayed. Costco blame this delay on Greece complex administrative requirements and local opposition. On the other hand, according to Greece, the expansion has been delayed because Greece refused to accept the environmental studies provided by Costco, calling them insufficient. We all know how much China cares about the 
environment, especially when it comes to foreign country. On top of that, the people living near the port are trying to stop the Costco's plan to legal action. It's clearly China is facing huge opposition in the Euro European country. In the same continent, another country made a decision that proved to be a huge setback for Chinese influences in Europe. Yes, you heard it right. The only G7 country which once joined the BRI is Italy, is no longer part of the BRI. On the 21st of April 2023, Italian Prime Minister Maloney confirmed that Italy intended to exit the BRI. And finally, on December 6, 2023, just few years, four years after the joining of the BRI, the Italian government formally announced that Italy will not renew the 2019 Memorandum of Understanding or MOU regarding its formal participation in China's Built and Road Initiative or BRI. This wasn't the only blow to China in Europe. Just a year ago, in 2022, Estonia and Latvia quit the China's 17 plus one group, which was an initiative by the Chinese of foreign affairs to promote business and investment relations between China and Europe in 2021. It was Lithuania which not only left 17 plus one, but also urged other European countries to leave in fact, Lithuania, a country with a population of less than 3 million, did a thing even some of the most powerful countries on the planet would hesitate to do. It started strengthening its ties with Taiwan to such an extent that China has been banned Lithuanian products from entering the Chinese market. In fact, Lithuania has even scheduled a visit of its 11 MPS to meet Taiwan's newly elected president this year of 2024. Now think, just Europe, who's slaying the dragon on your wrong? Truck, which drives it to the storage area. The African area, continent wants a bastion for Chinese loans. Is now this slowly is one area and where still some storage yards around the, the Chinese world. loans to African countries fell from 31% of the total Dealt in 2018 to just 12% in 2021. In fact, the, inevitable the Chinese the loan commitments to Africa, Perhaps which the solution lies to $28 in the billion dollars in 2016, and fell just to, to $11 billion to dollars in problems. 2018. But with machines tasks for us, of it and with as organizational of systems, and dropped to $995 million in 2022. Thanks for watching this the video major reasons about behind this are falling demand Be sure to and subscribe to Chinese debt, economic slowdown, and China's own economic problems. This is why, as you can see in the graph, the World Bank overtook the Chinese lenders in 2017, with its loan shooting up from almost $7 billion in 2010 to more than 30 billion in 2022. When it comes to ports, the $10 billion Bagamoyo port project in Tanzania, signed in 2013 between China and Tanzania, almost got canceled by the Tanzania's then President John Magafuli in 2019 because he believed the project was meant to exploit Tanzania. Unfortunately, Tanzania's new president, Zamia Soluhu Hassan, decided to revive this project. In the case of Asia, where China has invested billions of dollars, we'd hope to reap huge benefits to China, either witnessing cancellation of projects of its own projects are backfiring. For instance, for Pakistan's Gwadar port, where China has and spent billions in hopes of decreasing their reliance on the Malacca state, the project could potentially fail. This is because even if Pakistan government couldn't oppose the Chinese investment to a large extent, the locals in the region have literally started revolting against Chinese. In fact, the whole region known as the Balochistan, Balochistan is the highly unstable region and this is not only about China. 
and its projects. The rebel group in this region are also against Pakistani army because Pakistan has never fo focused on the development of the Balochistan province. Even they keep extra extracting natural resources from the region, considering this issue is in China, built a school, sent doctors, and promised some 500 million for the construction of a hospital, a college, and a various infrastructure projects to supply the city with drinking water. Pakistan even deployed around 12,000 soldiers to protect the Chinese workers, but still attacks have not stopped on the Pakistani army or the workers involved on various infrastructure projects linked to the CPC. Another reason why this port could fail because it passes through Kashmir, another highly unstable region. This region is also claimed by India, who allied, allied with Pakistan's presence with illegal occupation, according to military experts. India could potentially recapture this region very soon, cutting off China's access. If this happens, China's billions of dollars might go in vain. Moving our focus to Myanmar, China planned to build the Kuayangpyo port at a cost of $7 billion, but later Myanmar itself decreased amount to $1.3 billion. China's investment in the project was reduced because Myanmar was aware of Chinese debt traps and they didn't want to fall for it. It even so, Myanmar took $1.3 billion because economy was already weak and it really no other options but this incident indicates that countries are becoming aware of these Chinese debt traps. And many other nations are canceling Chinese debt. Samoa, a small nation in the South Pacific region, Ocean, also decided to cancel a $100 million Chinese backed port of development in 2021, calling it an excessive amount for the small Pacific island that is already in heavy debt of China. China is also present in Israel's Haifa port. It's one of the main seaports in Israel, where about 99% of all goods in, in and out of the country by sea. China's Shanghai International Port Group already operates a port at Haifa. So to counter it, Israel has awarded a major contract to an Indian company named Adani Sports. In 2022, Adani Ports acquired a major part of the port for 1.13 billion US dollars for operations. Sri Lanka is tackling China with the help of other major economies. America has been investing more than half a billion dollars in a port terminal in Colombo, which is been developed by Indian Adani Ports. The financing by the American government's International Development Finance Corporation, or DFC, being seen as America's move to counter China's influence in South Asia. In fact, this is the biggest investment so far in Asia by the DFC. On top of that, Adani Ports signed a $700 million deal built and operate transfer deal in 2021 with the Sri Lankan Ports Authority to develop and run the strategic Colombo ports. Western Container Terminal similarly, India assisted Sri Lanka with $3.8 billion, which includes currency swaps, grants, credit lines, humanitarian supplies, and infrastructure developments. To reciprocate this, Help Sri Lanka cancelled Chinese projects in the Jaffna Peninsula. They allowed India to invest in the energy sector and built a free floating dock facility, maritime rescue coordination center. Surprisingly, one of the subunits of the MRCC will also be installed in the China-operated Hamban Tota port. 
Lastly, similar is happening in Bangladesh, where India and Japan have joined hands to counter China. India and Japan have decided to develop a port named Matarbari Port, which will be a deep sea port that will help not only Bangladesh, but also India and China in connectivity looking forward, and that only time will tell what the other nations' future steps will it take to counter China.